President Biden has announced more help for the victims of Hurricane Helene, which has killed 180 people in the southeastern United States. Kamala Harris has been in Georgia, a crucial swing state ahead of next month's presidential election, where she attended a briefing at an emergency operations center in the city of Augusta. Meanwhile, Joe Biden has been surveying the damage in both North and South Carolina, where almost half the known deaths from the storm have happened. The visit came as the Secretary of Homeland Security told reporters that the Federal Emergency Management Agency, which helps in the response to natural disasters, doesn't have the funds to make it through hurricane season. Carl Nasman has been in North Carolina, just north of that hard-hit area of Asheville. This is Green Valley, very remote, up in the mountains in the western part of the state. Where we are now, there's still no electricity, there's still no cell service, there's no internet service. So bringing in any kind of relief right now is going to be very useful. What we've heard from local mayors, local fire department officials, they're telling us that federal aid still hasn't really reached these areas. It's been difficult even to get in until about the last 24 to 48 hours. These roads have been blocked, downed power lines in the way. So right now what we're seeing is a very active repair and recovery effort over my shoulder. You might be able to see there's some teams now working down there to get some of these electric poles, utility poles back up, get communications restored. This area here, this is where that water really poured in during that storm. It came rushing down this valley. And what local residents tell us is it took out homes and businesses along with it. In this region, this really is the hardest hit region we still know that there are people missing and there are active search and rescue operations still going on here. The death toll does continue to rise. There's fears it could go even higher still. But right now, this does look like a long rescue operation and a long recovery operation. We heard that from the Secretary of Homeland Security today, Alejandro Mayorkas, saying this is likely to be a multi-billion dollar and multi-year recovery effort. One more note to talk about here. There are residents that we've talked to who simply lost everything, living in, in a mobile home park. The waters came up five feet high, spilled into their homes. The worry now is going to be that many of these types of people simply don't have flood insurance. They told us their homes have now been condemned. They're not sure what's going to happen next. This could be another unfolding disaster as we move forward, a financial one. If there's no flood insurance for many people here in North Carolina, where will they go next? How will they afford to buy their next residence? That will be something we'll have to see in the future. Well, let's speak now to Emily Fulmer, who is Chief Operating Officer at the Global Empowerment Mission, joining me live at the GEM Base Camp in Asheville, North Carolina. Emily, thank you very much for making the time to talk to us in these really difficult circumstances. Just describe what you've been seeing, what you've had to cope with in recent days. Yep, so our team has been up in helicopters for the last few days. Uh, surveying and trying to find anyone that needs help. You know, we're seeing SOS messages on some of the roofs. Um, some of the towns are not accessible at all and, and difficult to land with a helicopter. So we are one of the operations that has the smaller, more agile helicopters that are able to land in more difficult places. Um, things are devastating. So we're landing there, sending in search and rescue teams to go out into the neighborhoods make sure that folks are okay if they want to be evacuated we're arranging for that um and if everyone's safe then we're dropping supplies and food and water but are there some places where people have not been reached to ask that question there likely are places where people have not received food supplies or a check-in yet so that's what we're focusing on today uh today we're really looking at the t names of the smaller towns that are not really on, on the radar so far in terms of other groups working there and places we don't think may have been reached yet. Because we don't have the information, we really have to put boots on the ground first to then go door to door, see, um, see what folks need and how they're doing. Okay, Emily Fulmer, uh, good luck with your work and thank you very much for joining us on BBC News.